Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Tonight, I got a brand new bag in. I'm going to put it up here in a second. But these are the two bags I've been using this entire time. I started, actually, before this even, with the TP3, and it wasn't even the TP3B, I don't believe. I didn't have the nice plastic base. I bought the TP4B when it first came out. I've used this thing pretty hard for a long time. But since buying the TPXL, the TP4B has just become my insulated tools, primarily anyway. My TPXL, there'll be a link down below to these videos so you can go take a look at the loadouts on these two bags that I have. Now, this loadout has changed a little since the video as some of my jobs have and have forced me to get some different things into this bag. But tonight, we're here to show a new bag and that is the TP double XL now this bag is big um, to see the reason I want to do this I'm gonna take the shoulder straps off of these two real quick so they're easier to use here on the desk both the TP XL and the double XL both come with the nice veto shoulder straps with the padded deal and the nice clips and all I believe it's pretty much the exact same strap on even this new one. It doesn't look to me that they've changed really anything, so great strap. Well, let's take those off so we can actually play with this. Still got my tag on this. This literally just came, well, let's just be classy about it and use our new Knipex step cuts to cut that off. How about that? These are those that were in that video the other day. So, anyway, new, knip, new TP double XL versus the XL. I'm going to put this XL, we'll pop, the, we'll pop the little M12 impact off the side of that. That's what they kind of look like right together. The, the double XL is taller than the XL by maybe an inch or two here. It's just a little taller. And the, the width, though, appears to be almost identical in the main body of the bag. Where the differences really come in are on the sides. You have meter pouches on both ends of this bag, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, the insides, go ahead and pop this open. Still got my stickers and stuff inside there. The inside of these bags, honestly, it looks like Pretty well an identical setup on both bags. There's really not much difference at all. The, the top of this one all zips down all the way to here, kind of like this one does. It's just everything is a little bigger on the double XL. This, this pouch area up here for keeping, you know, your little stuff where I keep my leads and stuff over here, you can see it's probably a third to maybe 50% bigger than the TPXL on the double XL. So a whole lot more usable space here for, you know, I love it with it being clear for like my wire nuts, my leads, my extra stuff like that for my meters. Like that's what I have up here is my leads and some things that, you know, go with that. And then I have another set of leads right here in the top, my ones I use all the time. And uh, everything else though in here, all the pockets appear to be identical and the way we're going to really check that out is naturally i'm going to upgrade to this bag so we're going to be moving everything from this bag over to here as well as most of the commonly used items that i have in my tp4b i believe can also move to this and can consolidate more the big deal being these pouches on the end when you check these out here you have little D-ring here with a tape loop. This came with a tape loop on the, out, on the outside of it already on. And then the bag on the inside came with one of the tape chains, which I really prefer the chains. Just my style. So once you get over here, these have a little D-ring here to connect things to, as well as your big ring up here. Then you have a little pouch here, and it doesn't have extra little loops inside for bits or anything. This is just open. So this would kind of be where you'd stick your leads on this bag instead of, you know, needing them up in the top and everything on here, as well as obviously my meter's just stuck right in the bag. So 
you have a nice spot to keep your leads right on the meter pouch. And then your meter pouch unzips part way on one side and not as much on the other. Let's go ahead and scoot this old bag out of the way for a minute. And you guys can see in here. You have another little mesh area where you could keep spare batteries for your meter here. You could keep another set of lead tips if you like to use, you know, these kind here. I'll try to link a lot of this stuff below, but like my leads I like to use are the Fluke silicone leads. And they're the ones that have the tips here where you can use different style. Like these are the insulated alligators. Then you can just snap these right onto the normal ones as well. So you don't need so many leads sitting around. And they snap together pretty firmly when they go. There you go. But, you know, you could keep, you could keep these little alligator lead deals uh, right here in the top of your, your meter pouch. And then you could just have your normal leads right here and have, you know, the option to add your alligators on if you need them. Inside here as well, there's another couple pockets, if you can see that. There's two, two more pockets right here. And go ahead and show you, this is the Fluke 324 Plus. This is one of my main little meters. And that's just a baby in that pouch. There's, there's so much room left. You could probably leave the leads on it, to be honest. It, it's huge. So that fits really nicely. And then, I don't know, but here's a Fluke 117. This is a lot beefier electrician meter that I like as well. And look at that. I mean, they go right down in there and you still have all this extra room on top. So if you needed to pile stuff in the bottom or whatever, you've got the room for it. So let's go ahead and check out this other end. I believe you've got an identical situation here. They don't unzip as far on the back, just like three inches. And then the fronts unzip almost all the way down. And it's the exact setup on this side with the dual pockets inside, the little mesh pocket here on the front, and then of course your pocket here. So they're the exact same on both ends. But now you could carry both, you could carry your two favorite meters with you, whatever those are. These are kind of my main two, the Fluke 324 Plus and the Fluke 117. So you could have a meter on both sides, different sets of leads. There's so many options for your meter stuff now, it's fantastic. For me, some of this is going to become spots for wire nuts because there's really not a lot of great spots. And obviously having a couple of easy access points here is good. I really like, you know, like keeping a little voltage sniffer here on the outside. That's, that's the little fluke volt alert. Uh, it's just something I like to grab without having to open the bag. The same with, you know, having one of the Vera ratcheting drivers. I like to have one of those on the outside too. That way I have a couple of the things that I grab the absolute most just right there ready to roll. But you've got no shortage of clips for things like, you know, a tape measure or if you like these little Stabila magnetic levels like I do, where you can grab it off of there to level anything really, little outlet boxes, whatever. They have a really nice little carrying case with a clip on the back. And a lot of times mine lives right here on the front, but in order to keep this bag a little thinner, it wouldn't be too bad now to put it right here and it really doesn't even go past the pouch. So that's fantastic. The other thing that was kind of important to me, and I never really did it with this other bag and it may be the exact same size pouch, but if you're ever wondering what you can fit, in the laptop pouch. You have a laptop pouch here on the back, or it could be your receipt book or however you like to invoice your clients when you finish a job. For me, I use my iPad Pro 13 inch or 12.9 inch, I guess it is, with the magic keyboard on it here. And I was playing with this a while ago, and this actually fits right in here very nicely. It's almost like it's made for it. It's a it's a dead perfect fit into the bag. Now, this is another difference from the previous TPXL. As you see this right here is almost a, a solid feel. It's a plastic leather, pleather, whatever, where the old one was just the fabric that they use on the whole exterior of the bag. This like Cordura feeling stuff. And so you open it up and you have it like that. This one, is just that much different. So I've been, 
I've been kind of a fan of invoicing everyone with this. The only thing different here along with the the little leathery see this is the cordura stuff down here and all around and here as well but when you go here you can see how shiny this is compared to this one it's a real slick probably more water repellent to be honest i think water would go through this one over here if it was out in the rain very long on the job site and i, I know this is a big reason to go with a tpxl is if you're in the weather at all on a job a lot of times we don't leave our stuff out in the rain, but it could suddenly hit while you're working. And it's really nice to have, you know, a flap over your tool, main tools and stuff. Your meters are all covered. This is covered. And this being a computer spot or paperwork, whichever, it's nice that it has a little better waterproofing on this bag. So the only thing it's missing there that this one had is this pull strap. See on the, on the TPXL, you have a pull strap right here that actually runs to the bottom. So when you press in your laptop or something, if it's a really tight fit, you, you can just grab this ring right here off the Velcro, grab it with your finger and pull, and it will lift it up out for you. I never really kept this in there. I don't think I ever even tried to put it in there, but I don't know if this actually fits in the XL. So let's go ahead and try. I've, I've been just figuring that it didn't, so I never really gave it a shot. But it looks like you can get it in there. You sure can. So you get it in there, it's a little, little higher sitting because this is a shorter bag, but that will hold the iPad Pro as well. Just you don't have, I don't think, as good of waterproofing on the XL as you do on the double XL. So just, just a lot of, of minor differences in that area. We're going to go ahead and with the magic of editing, we're going to empty this bag and then we're gonna be able to show the insides of both side by side. So hang on right there and let's take a look at both bags empty from the front. Coming right up. Okay guys, here we are with both bags empty now. How about that? So you can see you have your same nice hanger hook on both of these bags. These are great, especially, you know, hanging on an AC unit or anything really. It's big enough and thin enough that it goes through louvers on things to get hung a lot, you know, a lot better than a, most other hooks would. These get light once they're empty. Uh, the insides, as I suspected, are almost identical with a little difference up top here being because this bag being just a little taller, it's allowed Vito to instead of just having this one pouch up here, they've added these nice little pouches across here. And if you're like me and you run a lot of these, you know, like you have your little impact bits for your, for your impact, these are great for sticking your most commonly used ones right across here. This is something we see like in the Tech MCT bags and those kind of things. You have room to carry your most used bits right up here and they're very visible and easy to grab. But otherwise, very similar bag to the TP XL. The front area here, pretty much the same. They do, they do have a, a neat difference in that on the TP XL, if you see right here, you see your front spots here, and that's been where I kept things, you know, like my, my electrician pliers and stuff. I like them right in the very front, so they sit right behind this hard front that's before the pockets. But those right there on the new TPXL are actually, look at this, they're removable. So if you don't like, if you don't like them there, there's two Velcro strips, one at the top and one at the bottom, and you can just go ahead and take this out. And this is part of their V-swap. So you have, you know, your little grommets on the end, a couple strips of Velcro, and if you want that out to have a big bunch of room in the front, look at that now. You just have wide open room here where pretty large stuff could be put. I mean, we're talking, if you really, really wanted to in any way, you can drop, like your impact will fit in here. Like that's how big that is. I'm putting that in there with one of the big M, uh, M12 batteries on here, the four amp hour, and you can set it right in front of your tools if you want to. That's how wide that gap is once you take out the V-swap panel. Now, 
For me, I really like this. I may look and see if they have one that's even better for what I'm doing, but that's basically what I do with it, is I put my, my most commonly used Knipex stuff right across. That's the Cobalts, the needle nose, you know, th the basic stuff right across the front there, and then they sit right in there. But having the ability to change out this front panel is really cool, or just to remove it if you want this enormous amount of space. So that kind of tells you, you can get, you could really load this bag down. So don't be guilty of that. I know we kind of all are as veto bag owners. <laughs> we turn these things into a health hazard to carry because of all the stuff we like to carry. There's an unbelievable amount right here on the table that I unloaded out of that. But for my purposes, I think this bag is, I'm there. The new meter pouches, the little V-swap deal here that I can decide how I want to set this up, the extra bit slots up here, they're all the, my favorite things about the Tech MCT. The extra pockets and stuff are now part of the TPXL, and I'm able to keep my iPad right here on the back, and it actually has a, water, a weatherproof top over it. I, I think I'm there. I love the extra space up top here. This is very similar to, you know, they're like PB4 parts bags and stuff. It's very similar material up here on the top. So you can see through it. You can see what you have inside there. It's great. So a lot of, lot of awesome uses right here. And they have a V-Swap logo right here on the front of this, of this bag as well. The little yellow little yellow v-swap thing if you can see that's their little tag they have for that there's one right on the front of your bag also right down there in that yellow spot but anyway the great little spot out here in the front is really cool if you have like these wear a bit check the wear a tool check plus very handy thing to have you talk about packing a lot of punch in a tiny space drops right in the front there. I mean, it's almost like they made that pouch for that. It's it's beautiful. So I love doing that. Just, just fantastic bag, and I feel like this is a perfect upgrade. This bag now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my TPXL. It's perfect shape, no damage or anything. It's just, you know, worn in very nicely, which is almost a good thing. So I'll find somebody else around here that really needs one and hook them up with a nice bag. But this right here will be my my go-to from here forward. I just wanted you guys to get to see both bags side by side, the actual real life comparison of the two. Next, we're gonna load everything that I took out of this bag into this bag, get what are my best things out of the TP4 into here. We're gonna make a very consolidated, great working kit for what I'm doing now with the hotels and everything. And hopefully this will be eliminating both the TP4B and my TPXL, so it won't be taking up much more room in the van, in the truck, hopefully. So, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you got some good out of this video. If you did, hit that like button down below. That helps you get to see more of our content, as well as helps YouTube boost it out to more people. Uh, check the description if you saw any tools in here that you're interested in looking up. I'll try to have a few of them listed down below that I mentioned, as well as these bags will be linked down below as well. A lot of this stuff is out of stock. I had to wait almost six, seven weeks to get this bag. But once you get them, you get them, and it's great. So thank y'all for watching. See y'all the next one.